I will briefly say that Trump has uh, picked Amy Coney Barrett to fill out. She was number one in her class at Notre Dame. Um, they will probably confirm her. McConnell has the votes. And it will change the the uh, it will move the court right, allegedly, um, giving conservatives six of the nine seats. Now, here's my thing about this. Like. The law is much different than a political argument. And so if you're the the notion like they, they need to hurry up and confirm this Supreme Court justice that's a conservative so then I can spend the rest of their lives complaining about how liberal they are, because you dear complainer, don't understand how the law or the legal system works or how the Supreme Court works. That ignorance is on you. That is not on their supposed leftism or conservatism. And I see so much of this, like something like abortion, for instance. What Roe v. Wade will never be overturned. If you think that Roe v. Wade will be overturned or if you think that it will be reaffirmed, you're lying to yourself because you don't know what's going on. What will happen is little cases that chip away at abortion rights, but fundamentally, it will never, Roe v. Wade will never be overturned. Um, so like Amy Coney Barrett even says that on the Supreme Court, there's literally like one vote declared for overturning Roe v. Wade. And it's Clarence Thomas, who was confirmed in the 90s. You will never get a John Roberts, Alito or any of these other people. Um, so stop the freak out. <laughs> like there's there's no reason for it. Um, she is a uh, she was on a list of five finalists. And she's the, she would be the youngest member of the current court at 48, she, as well as at sixth Catholic. I, th I believe the other two justices are Jewish, maybe. Um, Trump would have a third appointee. Richard Nixon had four. Uh, she joined the faculty later of Notre Dame. She clerked for Justice Scalia and shares his constitutional views. She is described as a textualist who interprets the law based on its plain words, uh, rather than seeking to understand the legislative purpose of the uh, of, of the now, and she's an originalist who applies the Constitution as it was understood by those who drafted and ratified it. I will say this: I find it insane that most of you think that Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, and these other Republicans would spot a constitutionalist a mile away. I don't understand why Republicans continually walk around thinking that these people know how to judge a a a Supreme Court justice that understands the Constitution when they themselves flagrantly violate it on a daily basis. Seems like a complete uh, thinking error to me. Um, she has been a judge for only three years. She was appointed by Trump uh, for the Court of Appeals in the Seventh Circuit. Her husband is a former federal prosecutor. And uh, they have seven children, all under 20, two adopted from Haiti and a young son with Down syndrome. Um, she was a member of Faculty for Life, an anti-abortion group, and uh, she is getting dinged for basically being religious. We had a Ryan, – Reinhold and I had a, a long argument about this, and I'm much less uh, skeptical and, and think that it's basically a Pyrrhic victory to argue her, uh, her Catholicism because – she the 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 idea Reinhold that she is uh, this people of praise group that she was in that's supposedly the Handmaid's Tale, and she's going to sub, sub make all women submit while she herself is a career professional working mom who is going to be on the Supreme Court kind of undercuts the idea that her husband makes her submit every single day. Well, so I've done a lot more research since we had that conversation. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are a lot of things that. And part of what I was saying was that I think this is the things that the Democrats are going to bring up, not necessarily what I believe, as it were. Um, I do not. I do know that there are there are people out there with that mindset that are starting to gain some traction and grow as a movement. But I don't know if they'll ever be anything to worry about. The concerns I think that a lot of people have uh, th that I would have had about um, her nomination uh, weren't stemmed from her being a Catholic. I don't think anybody cares about she, her being a Catholic. It was some statements that she had made where she said that when deciding the law, she should take in the Bible over the Constitution on certain areas. And that's where I think a lot of the, the chuff was really coming from um, that I had seen. And 
I going back and reading more and seeing some things that were said and rereading the the quotes. I don't know if I particularly believe that she is that still has a mindset or she ever really did. Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, picking apart pieces of things that were said in law journals years and years and years ago and trying to assign them. Huh? Like I, I, li- I was listening. There's a great podcast called I think it's called Opening Arguments, and it's a uh, like a, like a blue podcast art cover. If you see it, and so I listened to them break it down, and I didn't in that hour conversation about her hear anything that jumped out to me. They were they were more liberal, and they were like framing things as a bad thing. When I like my girlfriend and I were like, why is that a problem? Like they she wrote this article in the 90s about the death penalty and she basically said you know if you're a federal judge and you have a mandatory mandatory sentence like a uh, giving the death penalty and you are a catholic who is bound by your faith to not give the death penalty you recuse yourself and so this person was saying that's disqualifying because she can't do the job of the judge so why would she let alone the fact that the criminal sentencing judge is different than the supreme court judge um but because appellate and she taught law at at Notre Dame for a long time so she, theories of laws come into play more often at the appellate and supreme court level than knowing criminal sentencing but she did teach criminal law at Notre Dame you know that's an example of the leftist freakout where her religious beliefs that they they're, they're overdoing it in my opinion and they're going to make they can't help themselves Kamala Harris is being pulled off the campaign trail she's going to do what she did with Kavanaugh and they'll all have her lead the tip of the spear because she's the nominee for vice president and she is going to overstep and overreach and she will end up hurting her election chances because they can't help themselves they've they don't have anything really other than her religion which doesn't seem to be as extreme as they're making it out to be and when you make it out to be extreme millions of Christians like me go I don't think you understand what you're talking about. And really, you're just kind of being insulting because you aren't even taking the time to figure out what I believe or what she believes. You're just being anti-Catholic or anti-Christian. And these are the very people who are constantly telling us we need to listen to the experiences of other people, but then they themselves don't do it. you know. And so that's where I think this is going to be an absolute mess that is going to backfire on the Democrats if they go down this route. But it's like their only card to play, you know, trying to compare her to the handmaid's tale is ludicrous. It's all, well, see the, so where that comes from is that group that she belongs to where women cannot hold like positions of power within that group. And, but I've, there's groups like that. It's been around for decades. I know Job's daughters when I was growing up was, a, was an offshoot of Demolay and, and things like that. So that's the kind of where that stuff comes from. But then you also have, um, there are some non-religious based concerns about uh, her as well. The fact that she's very willing to overturn past presidents and, and stare at a Cree and, and um, she's more of a um, Thomas kind of justice in that regard, where she would be more willing to overturn past precedent uh, if she felt that the past president was wrong and mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily opposed to that. I mean, that's how we got the good decision of citizens United that the left wants to overturn for some idiotic reason. Um, but the, the underlying tone is always going back to abortion, right? So it's this abortion debate that right. is fueling the, the visions of the of the left and the right. So this is how you whip up people in order to vote for you. I know there are tons of people who are like, I would vote for the libertarian, but I don't like their message on abortion. And it's the single issue voter that they're going after with this argument. So that's what they're going to go after her for. Not necessarily they care about her religion. They're just trying to find something to wedge into a, a, a perception of she's going to go in and, and overturn Roe v. Wade and there's going to be abortions all over the place. And not over the, you know, they're going to get rid of all abortions across the United States and then we're going to have a big issue. Right. So that's, that's the tip that they're trying to wedge in with, with Kamala, what they're going to try to do there. They're going to do it in a way that's going to irritate a lot of people, but I kind of think that's the, the point of it. That's it's always been the point of this whole conversation from the left and the right on this whole issue was because it's easy meat. Bullet, bulletin board material, as as we were as 
Dan Carlin said, right? Yeah, right. Then the, the newest Dan Carlin episode is amazing. You have to go listen to Common Sense. The last two episodes have been phenomenal. Um, there's very few issues that motivate people anymore. It's immigration, it's abortion, and it's gun rights. And the fact that nobody knows how the government works and civics education has been completely demolished because people find it boring. Um, it, it leads people to the, the the conversation around politics is totally unrecognizable from how the government operates at this point. And, and that's part of the problem. And that is destructive, honestly, because then you start electing people who are catering to your insane wishes as opposed to creating good government, right? And that's where I'm like, I'm all for her overturning precedent because some of that precedent was set by people who were trying to be political as opposed to governing correctly. I'd much rather have somebody who is overturning the precedents of Woodrow Wilson and LBJ uh, and the courts from the Warren era than, than where we're at now. But, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm an armchair quarterback on all things legal. So the switch in nine, say the switch in time saves nine. You know yeah. the whole story behind that, right? So that was the packing of the court caused the court to kind of change their view on all the New Deal stuff that they were labeling as being unconstitutional. They suddenly said, oh, they're going to pack the court. We better give them a little bit. So they changed and said, okay, we'll let a couple of these things through. And there's arguments over whether that really happened or if it was just one justice who decided to change his mind and about something and it kind of threw the court over but it but add there's some bad precedents out there so fdr starts passing the new deal and the courts start striking down major parts of it and he gets pissed and so he threatens to pack the court tries to pack the court and it doesn't end up happening um, right he didn't so. happen because he he started getting his things through mm -hmm. so that right. was the perception was that the court said oh they're going to pack it if we don't give him what he wants so let's go ahead and do that and that's when he started getting his um getting all those programs there. Um, but there but there's also decisions about whether or not um, the commerce clause and what the, what the commerce clause means and what it used to mean and what it means now, and uh, whether or not it can be used to tell people what they can do on their own property. And that stems back from the, uh, that same kind of era. Right. So there's a lot of bad precedents that are out there that libertarians see and say, man, it would be really great to get somebody in there and, and, get rid of all that bad precedent and return us back to what the idea was a more, more federalist type of uh, country. And so we asked for these originalists to come on there. Now we've got Gorsuch has come on and he's done a fairly good job. Uh, uh, more surprising than I expected. Um, I think that we might see the same thing with, with uh, this candidate, but yeah, you know, I don't know. I know she's really, from what I understand, she was picked because she's um, Donald's sister's friend of hers, right? So, or a favorite mm -hmm. of hers, right? So it's a favorite of the president's sister. Uh, and that's why she, her name bubbled up so quick and, and why she's only been a, a sitting judge for three years. And here she is getting ready to be put on the Supreme Court. She's um, also big in the Federalist Society, a member of it, which is a conservative. It, it's been kind of the spearhead of the project over the last 40 years to implement conservative justices. And a lot of Trump's appointments have come from the Federalist Society. I personally do not understand the freak out about the Federalist Society. Um, I follow them. I, I listen to a lot of their stuff, watch a lot of their videos. And a lot of it, I go, yeah, why are they treating these people like they're evil incarnate? Uh, if you watch it, it's just more of a a libertarian point of view on on legal matters. But that's probably why there's a freak out. So, Harry, jump in here before we move on to Brianna Taylor. I actually really don't have that much with the whole SCOTUS decision on this candidate. It's honestly like a, I really don't pay that much attention to a lot of those like judges. Like, so I don't have anything. It's, okay. It's fine. Fair enough. 